Catchy. Hit Music Only. Lass uns an Fangen. Fangen. The Energy Star Talk with Al King. It's good to have you here. It's good to be here. Thank you for having me. You're here because your your, your new album Love Stuff. Um, how would you describe your new album? Uh, I think it's a really... My album Love Stuff is a really good introduction to who I am as a singer, as a songwriter, um, and as a person. It has to do with the main things in my life which is boys and booze uh so it's just a lot of fun songs there's it kind of is a uh, roller coaster of a uh, ride and and of a record so i don't know I, j i just hope that people like it in germany and we do uh, we love your single axes and o's and it's so loud you sing it so loud but still your voice seems to be so clear how do you do that um well usually i i drink a lot but i don't know alcohol? I, yeah alcohol <laughs> yeah not just n tea um no it, it's just this strange thing that's happened um or no no just how i was born my mom always jokes and says that i came out screaming um i've just always had this crazy voice that carries and is really loud like if if you're sitting in a car with me and i start laughing like it'll hurt it'll hurt your ears um i just am really loud and so I was like, oh, great, I'll sing rock and roll. Perfect. And it, it, it's perfect. Like It, it sounds amazing. Um, uh, on Thursday, you, you're going to be on stage on the, the finals, the last show of The Voice of Germany. Yeah. You're excited. I am so excited. I just rehearsed today. I'm singing with the four finalists who are all like, so unbelievably lovely and sweet. It's um, any of them could could take it, you know, take the win. Um, I was more nervous because, I, like, I'm nervous because they're, they sing better than I do. And so we're singing X's and O's and they're singing with me. And, and um, it's just, it, it's a really fun experience. And I'm really, I feel very lucky that I, I got to fly over and do this. And so I'm, I'm so excited to be on the show tomorrow. So, but it's an, probably an amazing feeling to, to have your song sung on a, on a casting show. Yeah, it's it's actually insane. Um, th in America, they uh, a girl sang my song on The Voice, and so now that I'm coming over to sing it with the contestants on, you know, The Voice in Germany, it's pretty surreal, actually. I, I don't have a lot of time. I don't, like, step back and, and look at everything too often because I think that my mind would be like, you know, just explode. Um, but it's just really fun. And I have to say that Berlin is one of my, my favorite my favorite cities. I've, I've played some really fun shows here and um, I've spent a lot of time in Germany this year actually so it's awesome to come back and come back for such a big reason so it's really exciting. What do you think about casting shows? Uh, well I'm I'm gonna watch what I say because I'm gonna be singing on one tomorrow. I think they're really fun. You know what's cool about them? It gives I'd say Not that singers and, and like, I don't know, I would say famous musicians aren't normal people, but it's a platform for someone who wants a chance to sing and be on stage. And so that's why I think that these shows are so, I get like chills even thinking about it, it why these shows are so captivating because it's, it's everyday people who, you know, uh, you know, are young students or, you know, people who work in a store or a waitress and they have a dream of singing and being on stage. And so the fact that these shows are out there, it gives everyone a chance to do it. And it's really actually beautiful and, and cool. So I, I really felt that when um, I was singing and, and, you know, rehearsing with them today, it was something that was, I don't know, a special feeling and the, the, their excitement about being on the show. And, and I, I was asking them how long, um, you know, this whole process has been going on and, and the scouting was in February. It's a whole year process. And for them to be in the you know, top four finalists, it's, it's exciting. It's really cool for them. So I'm, I'm really excited to be a part of it for them. You know, it's kind of like super heartwarming. I think so, and I think it's going to be amazing tomorrow night. Um, you you said before that you 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 like Germany and you like Berlin, especially. Yeah. Is there? There's lots of cliches about Germans in this world. Is there any cliches you have? Like uh, anything you think about? That's typical German. Oh dear. Um, no, I mean. No, and I need to watch. You're, I think you might get me in trouble if, if I slip up and say something. No, I, I, I. No, you won't. You won't. I've been traveling to Germany since I was about 14 years old, and um, I've been all over. Um, and 
I've never had a bad experience. Actually, the first time I ever drank so much that I threw up was in Munich when I was 14. Um, Oktoberfest. No, uh, I, I just, I was in Amsterdam and we came for the weekend. And... Um, <laughs> it was your first time to drink uh, so much alcohol to throw up? Yeah, and my first hangover and everything. So, you know, Germany. Woo! But yeah, I've, I've never really <laughs> been able to drink gin and tonic since. Um, but I, So bad. I love coming to Germany. Uh, the The people here are always so fun and lovely, and um, the shows that I've played in Berlin have always been <sighs> wild. I think, and I, one of the craziest nights of partying um, and going out to places that I never knew could ever exist was in Berlin. Seems like you kind of live the rock star lifestyle. I just, we have a motto that I took from my favorite movie, Spinal Tap, and it's, have a good time all the time. So I actually even have that tattooed on me. But yeah. Where, I, where is it tattooed? It's on my thigh. All right. Yeah. That's cool. I think so. Yeah, I got it tattooed. And I hope it's cool. Um, let's, let's talk about your family a bit. Actually, your, your dad is very famous as well. Is he famous over here? Um, yeah, well, if you Google the name, um, he's well, well known. He okay. played in lots of movies yeah. that were pretty famous around here. Uh, Rob Schneider, he's a, 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 a famous actor. And um, we, we talked about that before. By now, <laughs> your dad gets asked about you. Does he like what you do? Yeah, I mean, I would... My... <sighs> I've got two very different parents. Um, my mom and my stepdad are, you know, the real like rock and roll parents. And, you know, most of my, actually all my knowledge of music comes from them. Um, and my my real dad, he, of course, yeah, he's proud of me. I mean, I did all of this by myself and I worked really, really, really hard um, to get, you know, to be doing the things that I'm doing. And so I think he's proud of me for, you know, my accomplishments Which and if he's not then i i gotta some to say to him no he's very <laughs> proud of me everyone's proud of me if i was homeless i feel like they wouldn't be so proud of me but i'm doing awesome things so yeah they're everyone's pretty my family's really happy for me and that's fair enough so um i uh i found some some funny quotes you you said once in, in other interviews or like oh, no. friends oh no and i'd love you to explain them to me it's not, not a bad thing it's just fun um you once said, I grew up barefoot, dirty, climbing trees. It made me appreciate things more. What do you mean with that? Uh, I hate wearing shoes. But um, you wear shoes, obviously. You well, can just take them off if you want to. No, well, now now I'm like always working and I'm I'm so short. So I like to wear, I call these my David Bowie platforms because <laughs> they give you like I literally live 12 in, centimeters plus. Yeah, uh, they're pretty high. Whoa. Um, I'm super short. So <laughs> I, I like to try and be eye level with, you know, most people. Um, yeah, I grew up in, in Ohio and um, I was kind of. I just love to be outdoors. I love to be in the woods. I love to be barefoot. I love climbing trees. I, I like, I don't know, that's just kind of how I grew up. And um, I was just like a filthy kid. I liked being in the mud. And that's just kind of stuff you do in Ohio. <laughs> <Have> <laughs> kind mud of an Ohio thing. Trees. Yeah. <laughs> um, especially interesting for me as a redhead, you once said girls can fall in love with an English redhead. You said that about Ed Sheeran, but, you know... I'm a redhead as a Chirin is, so... Now that I hear that back, that I, I say these things as, like, jokes. I joke when I'm nervous. And so <laughs> now I hear it back, and it's like, oh, my gosh, people are going to think that I'm a bitch. No, no, I didn't think you but were a bitch. But let me just say, every single stage in my life, <laughs> I've had a best friend that's a redhead. Every single stage of my life. My best friend when I was little, my best friend in middle school, my best two best friends in high school, my best friend now, my makeup artist, redhead. That's, I love redheads. I was fair. making I was making fun of Ed Sheeran. Why? Because he's a redhead. He, no. He's <laughs> that was he's, always a yes. He's no, he's genuinely like he's literally the nicest person ever. Ever. And I just have a horrible sense of humor and that will bite me in the ass because he is I mean, I have a f song called uh, America's Sweetheart and it's saying I'm not America's sweetheart. He's planet Earth's sweetheart, literally. And so 
retracted that I was joking. I love you. I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. I didn't mean to offend you. I think it's funny. No, I'm I... the offensive one. That's <laughs> awful. Oh my gosh. Uh, okay, so let's let's not talk about redheads anymore. Uh, another quote I found: "I want Dolly Parton boobs." Oh yeah. Nothing, you... nothing more to say. <laughs> I mean, they're called Dolly Partons. You you say uh, she's got Dolly Partons when when a girl has big boobs. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, Dolly Parton is my hero. Um, I I love her. I think she is stunning and beautiful. I think she is undeniably herself, and um, she made her body what she wanted to make her body. She sings incredibly. She has written some some of the best songs ever. Uh, she wrote I Will Always Love You, sang by Whitney Houston, but she wrote that song. She's incredible. So I would like to build up to having Dolly Parton's body. Yes. That's amazing. And How I, far back on my, where did you find these things? Ooh, I, I've been looking for days. Oh my gosh. Mm. Wow. This is embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, that's my job. For you, it's yeah. embarrassing, yeah. No, I'm no it's saying. not embarrassing for me. <laughs> no, I know. It would I be embarrassing be if you wanted... How her. boring would it be if I would only sit here and ask you about, like, and uh, how is it to travel around? That's interesting. It would be boring. Thing. Yeah, this yeah. is, this is no. genuinely keeping me on my toes. No, I, I didn't I'm, mean to I'm, keep I'm you on like your toes. I'm wondering, what, what, what do you have next? What did you find? Actually, we're almost at the end, because the last thing I want to know is, um, let's just talk about your single, Axes and O's. What do you mean with that song? How is it about? What is it about? Well, uh, the whole process of, of this song, how it came about, I was um, doing a lot of co-writing with different people, and co-writing, it, it was something that I didn't really want to do, and it's like a blind date. It could, you know, be super awkward, and, and especially for someone who, like me, who is, you know, my songwriting and the music that I create is very personal, and it comes from a part of me um, and so I didn't know if I could you know main, maintain that or <clears throat> hold on to that when I was co-writing with other people but we, you find people who it it makes makes music writing I can't even find my words you find people who make it fun and so I found a group of people um, very few that I, I really loved writing with and one is is a man named Dave Bassett and he just he helped me find my sound which nobody really knew what to do and so we wrote a song called Under the Influence which really set a big tone for the whole album and then I came back and um, we kind of had this little joke and I sat down and he was like all right Elle who you been dating what are we gonna write about and I was like well this guy's mad at me I slept with that guy there's this one guy who won't speak to me and we were just kind of like laughing and he was like X's and O's but like EX like X's and like O's and uh, I I wrote the song about four real guys that I had you know recently been having relationships with you know traveling around the world and such and uh it's a true it's a true story there are four people who are probably really mad at me <laughs> but who cares you just wrote the song and gave it back to them yeah but i mean we we never thought in a million years that this would be happening that i you know and now i'm gonna sing that song with four of the finalists on the voice in germany so sometimes life gives you unexpected surprises and i'm really happy with mine <laughs> And we're going to be excited how it's going to be tomorrow night. Thanks for being here, Thank El you. King. Dankeschön. Bitteschön. Hit music only. Energy. Hit music only.